Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday to all of you. Welcome back to Jesse's Occupational Awareness Channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I appreciate you. If you're a repeat viewer, thanks for stopping back by. We've got a little bit of content we're going to talk about today, so let's get right into it. When I worked for TDCJ, after I completed the academy, I finished up the OJT process. I got assigned to day shift administrative segregation, affectionately known ad seg. That was where typically the worst of the worst went. Now, that didn't mean that every day that I came on shift, that that's where I was going to be working. That just simply meant that's what I was assigned to. I don't know why, but for some reason, general population, they had... I, let me back that up. General population had more officers assigned a shift than SEG did because it was a larger portion of the penitentiary. Now, what I don't know why is why more of them would call in and leave that shift shorthanded. SEG, we didn't have a whole lot of call-ins. The time that I worked there, it, it was very uncommon to have call-ins short of people taking their vacation time, their comp time, which we got a lot of. So we were usually pretty well staffed. So where I was going with that, you could get assigned anywhere in the penitentiary where you were needed once you were on shift. I'd go through all the rigmarole to get where I needed to be. We talked about that in previous videos. And instead of getting assigned to one of the pods there in SEG, you could get assigned anywhere within the penitentiary that you were needed. Chow hall, back gate, picket, as long as you were weapon certified, and at the time, a minimum of a CO3. Now everybody starts as a CO3. Mail room, inventory, property, yada yada, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So in this video, I'll talk about one of the places that I was assigned to work for the day, the chow hall. Chow hall, it goes down in there. Now you're thinking, okay, the inmates, the offenders, they go to the chow hall, they eat, they leave. Well, on the surface, that's usually what you would see going on if you didn't have a very good eye to catch what all was going on. At the Styles unit where I was assigned, there were four chow hall buildings, A, B, C, and D. In the center of those was the center picket boss who controlled the doors for the gates that the offenders would travel down, and behind her was the ODR, the officer's dining room. I'm going to do a whole nother video on the ODR. That place definitely goes down. So what are you talking about, Jesse, whenever you're saying it goes down in there? I'm not talking about the fights, the assaults anything like that, but the trafficking and trading, this is where it was going to take place. So, one of the problems at TDCJ and a lot of penitentiaries around the country, offenders don't get fed a whole lot of food. Now, some of you are going to say, well, they're prisoners. They don't need to be served food. They did whatever they did. They don't deserve. We're going to get away from all that. These are human beings. And they're required to be fed food. I'll leave it at that. The state does have mandated requirements for what offenders are supposed to be fed for three times a day. But as I've covered in previous videos, there's what's supposed to happen per policy. There's what actually happens at the unit. They're supposed to meet in the middle somewhere to make that happen. Now, things aren't always going to happen the way that they're supposed to. That's going to be with any industry. So, in this particular morning, I reported in, got the shift turnout, had the briefing. I didn't get an assignment. And usually at the end of uh, passing out all the, the different pod assignments, usually the supervisor, if he remembered, <laughs> Lieutenant Raymond, I love you. Shout out to you, man. Hope everything's going well. Usually they would ask, 
did anybody not get an assignment? And in this particular morning, my hand went up. Hey, uh, LT, I, I got left off. Who's that? Officer Carter? Hey, Mr. Carter. Hey, are you going to be working gin pop today? Fuck. Really, LT? Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they shorthanded today. They called in. We're going to need you over in gin pop. Roger that, sir. Get up. Leave. I still got my stab vest on. Seg officers, the way you could tell a seg officer from gin pop was by our thrust vest. Stab vest, thrust vest, same thing. Big black vest, Velcroed around the sides, bulky thing. Yeah, we wore it everywhere. It was cumbersome. It was heavy. It was hot. But to us, we considered ourselves the elite. That was, that was the mentality. So you kind of felt proud. I did anyway. Walking around the penitentiary wearing that stab vest, everyone would look at you and go, that's a seg boss. Now they'd say all kinds of other stuff, things I can't say here on YouTube. Use your imagination. We weren't always popular, especially with the inmates, also with our other coworkers. So this particular day, I was told to report to general population turnout room. I vaguely remembered where it was because I had done one shift there, correction, two shifts there during my OJT, day shift and a night shift. So I kind of had a, a idea where it was. So I make my way over to day shift turnout, gen pop turnout, and go in. All the officers that were in there had already been assigned to where they were going to go. I didn't know where I was working at the time. And there was a sergeant in there. I can't remember his face. Can't remember his name. Hey, Sarge. Hey, how you doing, Sarge? Hey, Officer Carter. I was told to report general population for the day. Hey, Carter. Hey, man, how you doing today? We shook hands. Hey, listen, we're a little bit shorthanded. We're going to need you to work over in the chow hall area. You you worked the chow hall before? I say, Sarge, you know, I... I worked outside, and I patted down all the offenders, but usually the OJT does that. No, 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 that, that's, that's not what I'm talking about, Carter. You're going to be working in the chow hall. you done that before? And his head shakes, and I'm going, no. At some point during OJT, we were supposed to work inside the chow hall. Somehow, I didn't. I didn't want to dime out Officer Lewis, not going to snitch on anybody, so I'm going, no, I, roger that, Sarge, I'll be over at the chow hall, alright, thanks Carter, he slaps me on the shoulder, cool, he said, hey, you can drop that uh, vest if you want to anytime, nah, Sarge, I'm good, alright, there we go, he afforded me that opportunity, I was proud to wear that vest. It, it was it was kind of a beast of burden. So I make my way over to the chow hall. They had already fed breakfast. At this point, they're cleaning up everything inside, getting ready for lunch. Feed and chow at the place there. I'm sure it's the same at all the other facilities, but at the Styles, chow hall operations, 24 hours a day. There's always something going on in and around there. So Big brick buildings, there were four of them, A, B, C, and D. A and B fed buildings three, four, I think five. I didn't work gin pop much. C and D fed seven, eight, and so forth over there. A and B weren't quite so bad. A little bit better behaved offenders. Yeah. C and D, more rowdy. It just is what it is. It's the penitentiary. So I go over and I remember pulling on the door and the door's locked. Okay. I wasn't told which one I needed to work in or nothing like that. Go over to B-side chow hall. Pull on the door to that one. It's locked. All right. I yell over to the picket boss. Hey, boss. Door. That's code for pop the door. We're going to get in. Open the gate. She says, I ain't got control of that. 
and ignored me from there. Okay. So I'm standing around outside, hanging out. She's not doing anything for me, not helping out at all. What am I supposed to do? So I think it was probably a good 30, 35 minutes before a sergeant finally walks past. Hey, uh, hey, hey officer, you lost? Hey, Sarge, what's going on, man? I, I stole a report to the chow hall. Uh, I can't get in. Oh, oh, okay, here, let me help you out. Has his keys on his belt. He opens up the door, pops it open. I walk in. No sooner did I walk in, door shuts back behind me. Felt the metal. What? Put my hand back behind on the door. Pushed on it. Door's locked. Okay. Now, when you walk in, there's a long walkway. Metal railing, I guess you're supposed to put your hand on it, hold on to it. Anyway, out to the other side were all the tables. Now, a lot of people watching this or have watched other prison videos before. It was the two, four, whatever a four is, hex, octagon is eight. It was whatever a four-sided table would be, bolted to the floor, concrete floor, stainless steel, and then four round seats, circle, probably about the size of a dinner plate, not very big. There were a ton of these in there, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. I think there was enough in one row for 20 seats, so forth on down, all that around. Right when you walked in, to the left, there was what we called the chuck hole. Chuck hole was where all the trays would go in as they're walking out. You could also call it the scullery, the scuttle, the wash hole. This is where the trays would go in to get sprayed down. As you walked further on, when you got to the, the back of the, the chow hall, that was where the serving line was. There was an opening on both sides. And that's where the food service managers and the inmate workers would come through and set the big metal steam trays down. I didn't really get a chance to see much of what the food was. Uh, it was usually pretty busy in there. Once lunch came around, I don't remember what time it was. It wasn't your standard 11 to 12. It took hours to serve chow. I'm talking lunch would probably take like four or five hours. Some days, depending on what went on with it, by the time you got done serving lunch, it was time to start serving dinner, just depending on what all was going on. So I'm in here, all right, I stick my head in the chuck wagon, inmate looks at me, yo, what you want? Come again? Oh, hey, hey, officer, how you doing? I, I didn't recognize you. I, I ain't seen you work here before. All right, so I looked in the, the window in there, said, ah, first time working in here, just trying to see what I need to do. Oh, okay, well, hold on. Turns his head, yells out something, something sounding like manager, food boss, something of that nature. He was trying to get the attention of the food service manager, let him know that I was in there. Turns back around, hey, are you hungry? You, you, you want a tray? Nah, man, I'm I'm good. Thanks. Walk on down the area. I'm standing there at the servant line, and food service manager comes out. They wear the same uniform that all the COs wear, except on their collars, they had a little metal insignia that said FSM, food service manager. I never got to know her name. Didn't see her all that much. It was the only time I had worked at Chow Hall. Hey, hey, what's going on, boss? Hey, uh, you, you working here today? Yep. Yeah, I'm over at SEG. Okay, good. What I'm going to need you to do, cut me completely off. Didn't even give a chance to get my introduction out, nothing. What I'm going to need you to do, here, here's how it's going to go. You, you, you worked at Chow Hall, right? You, you, you worked at Chow Hall during OJT? Sure did. Lying through my teeth. Okay, so you know whenever they all come in, they're going to come in, they're going to move down the line here, we're going to serve them the food, don't let them sit where they want to sit. When they come down the line, they start filling in the seats as they are in line. 
Don't let them start moving around. And, you know, like they showed you in OJT, just make sure they don't trade around with anything. Roger that, boss. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh, you, you hungry? You want anything to eat? You, you, you got any Johnny's? Johnny's were sandwiches, either PB and J, what looked like pastrami, some kind of meat. We call it sweat meat, meat that sweats. Take a slice of ham, set it out on a plate, let it sit for an hour, come back to it. It's going to have droplets of moisture on it. Sweat meat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Goes back in there, comes back, brings me four sandwiches, all PB&Js. Okay, thanks. Uh, so I go on around to the area, sit down at one of the tables, start eating my sandwich. No water. Go look over the area, couldn't see where she had gone. Go back to the chuck hole window. Hey, SSI, hey, uh, hey can I get some water? Takes a plastic cup, takes the water spout, sprays it up, hands it to me, warm water. I got what I had asked for. So I had a dry PB&J sandwich and some nice warm water. Wonderful. All right, at that point, fenders are getting ready to start heading in. I could see them start lining up outside the windows. The wall back behind me where I first came in was uh, glass windows. You couldn't see in the chow hall from the outside. You could see out from it from the inside. And I was like, oh, okay, there's my cue. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these sandwiches? I took the sandwiches and set them back behind where the serving area was just sitting on the counter. Like, I couldn't eat four PB&Js. Shout out to you for, for feeding me, though. Appreciate that. So I'm standing at the back, and the supervisor opens the door door opens, offenders start filing in. And as they file in, you can see the head turn and you can see a jerk. They weren't used to seeing a seg boss in there very often. So they weren't too happy about seeing a seg boss. Seg bosses, we didn't let shit go down much. We would write infractions for just about anything. General population, usually a little more tolerant. So you could hear them as, as they're coming in. I could hear as they're flooding through the door. Oh, man, this motherfucker. Hey, hey, boss, man. Hey, hey boss, what's your, what's your name, boss? Don't worry about my name, man. It's on my name tag. Oh, it's, oh I'm, uh, yeah. I should have told him what my name was. Could have. Me being me. Yeah, you, you'll see it on my name tag. All right, so already they don't like me. They all file in. There's only supposed to be about 25 of them at a time as they come in. Another thing I failed to mention about the chow hall, there's no air conditioning in there. It's hot. It stinks. Just imagine you're in your kitchen. Turn on the hot water. Turn on the stove. Turn on the oven. And just set some food out on the counter. Come back in there about an hour later. That would be the environment of this chow hall. Just moist, damp, muggy. Uh, floor was slippery. Yeah, it, it not very ideal working conditions for if an assault was about to go down. So I'm hanging out in the back. Fenders are all getting in there, lined up. All the serving trays come out. I didn't work up forward where the food trays were. Uh, there were two food service managers up there. What the offenders were supposed to do, they were supposed to go down the serving line. They would hand them their tray. Sorry about that. They'd hand them their tray with whatever nice little stew, mystery meat, sweat meat, manager special, meat rock concoction that they had cooked up back there with on this tray, and they would sit down. Another thing I didn't mention. Damn. Okay. Before they came in, inmate workers came out to the tables and they would set a pitcher down out there. It was blue. You could kind of see through it, kind of not. It had some kind of beverage in it. Red, purple, tea, water, just depending on what they'd sit down on the table out there. Some would have ice, some wouldn't. When the offenders would get their trays, they'd get their tray, they'd get their spork, they'd get a cup, and 
as they went down the line, there was a cash register. Now, they weren't paying for their food, but to eat, they had their ID card that they wore on their shirt. They were supposed to have that scanned by the food service manager that was working it. That would show their name and the meal that they had eaten there. That was to show how many trays had been passed out that day, how many inmates had come through and eat, and so forth. And then from there, the inmates would walk around the area, and they were supposed to come to the furthest tray, walk closest back to the wall where I was, and sit down. That didn't happen because this being the first time that these guys had ever seen me working in there, they were going to try to test me. The first 10, 15 inmates, they just sit down at any old random seats and tables acting like nothing's going on. They knew what they were supposed to do. So now at this point, I got to walk up forward. Hey guys, come on, stand up. Come on back where the area is. Hey, come on, man. Let's just sit down and eat here. We're just trying to get out of here. We just came back for giving me all kinds of excuses. Get up out of the seat. Now, move to the back of the wall. Now, that sounds authoritative and commanding. Using loud tones, sometimes you got to to get by. Other times, it can have the opposite effect. In this particular case, I'm not going to say they respected me or not. But they did what I said to do. They got up, got up from the tables, come down, went all the way back. Four of them sat down at this table, four sat down at that table, and so forth. They're eating their food. It was some kind of brown stew. Could have been something hamburger helper related. There was some kind of bread, cake, cornbread, a square looking bread kind of thing <laughs> i don't know what it was and then they'd fill their cups up with the juice and so forth so at that point i'm walking up and down the aisles uh, everyone had heard me yell at the first group of guys so they're all sitting down at the tables where they're supposed to once they finish their trays they're supposed to sit there till it's time to start going the supervisor would come and he'd bang on the door i didn't know at the time that was my cue to start having them filter out. He bangs on the door. I didn't do anything. A little while later, door opens. More inmates start coming in. These guys are sitting at the table. They're done eating. They're just sitting there hanging out, chilling. Sarge sticks his head in the door. Why are y'all still at the tables? Let's go, let's go. Starts yelling. Hey, Officer Carter said it was cool. We stay here. I mean, come on, Sarge. We just sit here. All right. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Just is what it is. So at that point, now I'm telling the guys, all right, go ahead and get up, turn your trays in, so forth and so forth. They get up, pass the trays through the chuck hole window, all filter out. Now at this point, inmates are passing each other. They weren't necessarily supposed to do that. These guys were supposed to be ready to file out before the new ones filed in. That's to keep down passing anything amongst themselves so at this point they're passing each other sarge is pissed off at me because he thinks that i'm not doing my job in there i was the new guy rinse wash repeat new of uh, new offenders come in they're looking over at me see the seg vest and at this point after about two hours or so of this goes on Shots of inmates keep coming in. I'm having them sit down, eat, turn the trays in. I'm just absolutely covered in sweat. My, my gray shirt looks like I just got in the shower. Just It was just miserable inside this building. No air, no fan, no circulation, just muggy. I want to say it took around four hours, five hours, something like that. I wasn't even watching the time to get done feeding it and Sarge finally pops the door open hey Carter we're good leaves the door open like oh god I finally finished with this mess and this was just one freaking day just one day of it Officers weren't permanently assigned to chow halls. Usually, whoever was on general population, they would get moved from a building over into the chow hall for the time period. Then they would go back to where they were supposed to go. 
I was done for it. I wasn't done for the day, though. Once I finished at that, uh, I can't even say what it is here on YouTube. Once I got done working the chow hall, I filed out, went over to the ODR, got me some ice cold water, had pulled pork for the day, as they typically did most of the days, some kind of black bean. I sat down, ate a little bit of pulled pork, had some black beans, chugged about three cups of that water, tried to have some of the red juice. It was way, way oversweet for that day. Some days it would just be a red beverage with no sugar in it. Other days, take a cup of sugar, pour it in some water, add some red food coloring, swirl it around. That's what you got. That's what we had for that day. After I got done eating, went back over to SEG, didn't get assigned to a pod for the particular day. I got lucky and I was utility for the rest of the day. Utility was roving bosses. That was my first experience working in the chow hall. It was hot, stink, loud, just nasty. Just, just a nasty place to be. Once all the offenders would get done eating, the inmate workers that worked back there, they were supposed to come out, mop the floors with pine oil solution. Pine oil is what you would call pine pine no copyright infringement, pine saw, any kind of pine cleaner. It was supposed to be diluted with water. Sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. And the room would just stink of pine smell and food that they had cooking back there. Plus just the stagnant air and the moist air that was in there. It, it was not a pleasant experience to say the least. And any other time that I'd get assigned to the chow hall, I'd usually look at the supervisor, LT. What I do to piss you off today, man? Please, please anywhere, anywhere, but 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 that place. And that was usually the reaction to any others that had to go work there. It just wasn't pleasant at all. Folks, thanks for taking the time to view this video. I really hope you enjoyed the content. Stick around. I got a lot more content I'm going to talk about. I think probably for the next video, we'll either get into the mail room or property inventory that I would work way more times than I ever wanted to. Everyone take care of yourselves. Stelves. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I appreciate every single one of you. Y'all take care.